Uh, okay, what's next on our agenda here, Nancy? I don't we have, my have another story out of Spectrum News that redefining autism could improve research on the condition. And basically, the argument here is rather than looking looking at it as a genetic set of conditions that you look at it as a trait, that you look at autism as a trait. And this might result in um, getting earlier diagnosis, which is what it's really all about. It really is. And I think I think it's, a, it's been a long time coming, but this discussion, I would love to see this come to a head. Every few years, they redefine autism in the DSM-5, and, and that's, that's fine, and it's a list of symptoms. But I, I know a lot of people who take issue with the fact that there's only that it's that it's autism spectrum disorder, and that there there are no words to describe autism that aren't a disorder, and it's high time that we came to that, in my opinion, because while there are things that can be a challenge with autism, there are aspects of autism that are not challenging, right. and we need to make room for that in our vocabulary. Um, I'd also like to see us make room for more words because no two people with autism are exactly alike. And when we when we put it all in one category, it's very confusing for everyone. Um, so I'd like to see more words instead of less words. Yeah. I think when, when we tried to take Asperger out of the equation, I don't know, that didn't help anyone as far no. as I'm concerned. No. And they point out that the average age of diagnosis is four, which is how old my son was when he was diagnosed. But we all know that that's not ideal. No, that, I mean, that is not the ideal. Two, if he could have started his ABA program at two instead of just under the age of five, I, I think about that every day. What what could have happened? Right. And, and I think a lot of people do. And so the fact that I mean, I guess a couple of years ago, the average age was seven. So we're moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yippee, I guess. Um, but, I, you know, if we could get to the point where. The first time that they're screening for autism is at a year, folks, uh -huh. one year old. If we could get closer to that marker of identifying kids who are at risk, we would have more people um, ha having less challenges, uh -huh. I, I think, which is what we all want more than anything else. Yeah. My so, son was never screened. Why it was never screened for autism. Um, your pediatrician? like. No. He did not screen him for autism. I called my pediatrician when Wyatt was just turned three and said that he had such significant language delays and was having such severe tantrums. And he basically poo-pooed me and said, well, kids that don't speak have tantrums or having problems with language and boys talk later than girls. Let's give right. it some time. So that was, you know, even further delayed. And finally, when I took him in um, at a little bit over three, he said, well, he's at least a year delayed. So you need to have him screen somewhere and gave me a clinic where to have him screen. And they said, well, he could be on the autism spectrum. And then he was misdiagnosed with PDD NOS. And it wasn't until a regional center diagnosed him at age four that he had the autism diagnosis. Well, and Amanda has written that these new levels are very confusing to me, and I think they're very confusing to everybody. I just the other day somebody was sharing their diagnosis of their child with me, and um, that they had decided that they wanted me to look at it. And I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know why, but we were looking at it together, and I saw that the 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 expert had given them a one number rating, which we see all the time, Doctor Grampichet. And ask Dr. Doreen, she'll ask someone, you know, did you get the diagnosis? What did they say? And people will say, well, level one. And, and she always says to them, well, you know, technically there's more than one number. There should be two numbers. And a lot of experts aren't, aren't putting that in, in the diagnosis, which is very troubling. Um, but it is supposed to, the, the point of it is supposed to say, how much support does someone need? When you have the diagnosis, you definitely need support in these two different areas, but how much do you need? So a three is saying that you need a lot of support, a two is saying you need a moderate amount of support, and one is saying that you need support, but not as much as you do at two or three. But the problem is, is that a lot of people are interpreting it, oh, your child's a one, so he doesn't need support. No, the very, the very definition of it is that they need support. So... Um, 
it, I do think it's confusing because I think that the people who trained folks in how to diagnose maybe need a refresher course because they're putting it on the documents. It's crazy. Hey, thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.